Well, hello, everyone. Well, I just want you to know I have a very special guest today, and you're going to love a lot of what we have been conversing about. So we have Marina Marchioni from Dark Star Astrology, and she is really interested in fixed stars, one of my favorite things, because as you all know, when I'm working with the 27 nakshatras of Vedic astrology, their meanings are really derived from the fixed stars. And Marina is going to inform us about a lot that she's been working about with the fixed stars and her astrology. So Marina, Thank you for coming and joining it with us today. Can go ahead, take take the take over. Tell us about you and what your astrology and what your channel is all about. Okay, so um, yes, it's I am a tropical zodiac person, but the reason I really got into the fixed stars was because for a while I was wondering, oh my God, shall I go sidereal? Shall I? I, I knew that there was something in the sidereal that was that seemed more true because I love the connection to the to the night sky that the you know it where it is it's the same as that so you know when you see the moon in the sky it's it's not often it's in the constellation of Aries but then in tropical it'll say it's it's in Taurus I don't you know but then when you look in the sky you'll see that it's in the actual constellation of Aries mm -hmm. but when you when I use the fixed stars the good thing is like when I do the moons I do say uh, the moon is conjunct, like the lunar eclipse that's coming is going to be conjunct Zubin El Janubi, which is in the southern scale of Libra. But it's actually, but then, you know, it's tropical, it's Scorpio, 14 degrees Scorpio. Yeah. But yeah. so, but my, so my meanings are derived from the decans as well, but also on the six, the fixed star as well. So we do have a, a nice overlap with um, Vedic so that you don't lose that um, contact with the the sky. And yeah. the meanings will never change, you know, even though they, they, the positions do, you know, the p positions of the fixed stars, they move. And that's why, obviously, that's why Vedic is different from tropical because they've moved. But, um, you know, at least their, their meanings will never change. Exactly. Although people have tried to change the meaning of Regulus now because it's moved into Virgo. <laughs> Which, which and, was interesting. I know uh, the tropical astrologers say it's in Virgo, but actually it's not sidereally. It is about six no. so and of Leo. So regulus, there's, there's the a, meaning of regulus and never be Virgo. Well, <laughs> Just yeah, really I know. But tell us how you use the fixed stars in your work. Do you use them in your chart readings or do you? Use oh, yeah. Them yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, world events, tell me what you do exactly with them. Yeah, I mean, they, the, there's so many of them, but there are the major ones, obviously, like the major ones like Regulus, Aldebaran, um, Antares, the, the four, the four biggies yeah. and foam the royal stars, the royal stars. And then, um, then you sort of work outwards from there. And there's, 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 um, there's a few more, there's the magical Bohemian ones as well. Oh, um yeah. but I, how do you use them how yeah they're the medieval ones um i don't really practice medieval magic but there were there's about 20 and they're probably all the ones that you're probably familiar with that they they're the pretty major ones yeah. um algol is one of them oh, yeah. is you know the famous beheading star uh and then one in the crow corvus as well so um they're all used they're using conjunction with crystals and for healing and protection and all the yeah algol and um corvus are protection stars that they are dark stars which mm -hmm. is kind of why i kind of got to name my uh my the astrology dark star astrology because i was interested in working on the shadow and you know seeing finding your demons or whatever and the, the thing is with the fixed stars yeah they do that some of the meanings are quite extreme they're mm -hmm. not they're not fluffy so a lot of people get put off them because they're really, you know, they're like quite monstrous and like the beheading yeah. star, they're really extreme. But they weren't really originally meant to be used in a birth chart. They were mainly for, you know, for predict predicting events, you know. So I think that's why they sound so bad because when you, because an event is different. It, it passes quickly. But if you're born with Algon on your, on your son, you're stuck with it for your whole life. 
Yeah. So do you know what I mean? So they, they weren't, I don't think. And that is really everyone born around May 15th through the 17th, mm. the 18th, that, that has a gull conjunct the sun. Every, yeah. yeah, but I did research on that. And you, when you look at all the people that have it, they, they're not mass murderers. And, you know, a lot right. of them singers, it's, it's a very artistic um, star. Um, it's mainly dealing dealing with pain and transmuting that pain. Uh, like one of the singers, what's his name? He was in um, he was a singer in the sixties, and oh, I've forgotten his name now. But he he's got a very very soulful voice, and you can sort of hear the pain in it. And he's got about four of his personal planets on Algol. Wow. Um, yeah. If I remember, sorry, my you brain is not my... born May sixteenth. Um, Tucker Carlson, who just <laughs> has stepped down from Oh my God! <laughs> sun, sun conjunct uh, Algol. So I mean, wow! I didn't know that. I'll have to look at his yeah. chart. Oh, yeah, what's going on there? <laughs> we'll be talking yeah. about that in the future. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, um, but yeah. So tell me, how do you use them to oh, right the future because i mean with the world i know here's one thing i know like in the ancient times they used a lot of them for shipwreck and things like that because mm. i remember there's one called sheet uh that oh, yeah. comes with, yeah. <laughs> i mean it's awful when when i was studying astrology and, and i was taking all the exams and western astrology yeah. I remember the way that I remembered that fixed star was because it sounds like a nasty word. Yes, okay. it's the fan. <laughs> and that was the description of that fixed star. But I remember it's talked a lot about flooding and shipwreck. And I think it's kind of interesting. It's in Pisces. And, you know, that does deal with the waters and Neptune and, and shipwreck. So, and so accidents. I, yeah, and I think I remember uh, the day the Titanic or uh, the ship the Titanic sunk. Sheet was one of those fixed stars that was really relevant at that time. Yeah, and also I found it for things like air air crashes as well because it's Pegasus. Oh. Sheet is on the nose of Pegasus. So um, yeah. the, the myth with that is that the rider fell off. He was trying to reach for the stars and then he panicked and he fell off. So oh. it's, it's, it's reaching too far as well, Pegasus. It's like um, overreaching yourself. So, um, yeah, like when I use them in natal readings, obviously the, the really uh, extreme predictions you can't, you know, you, you can mention them, but you have to, it's usually a test. It's usually, it's not like your character is doomed to be this. But it's like all like all negative things in a in a chart. I see them as being really. It's just describing the test that you will face, not your personality. I don't I don't like seeing the chart as being this is your personality and right. oh my god you've got Mars square Saturn that means whatever. I just think no, you chose this chart because you you were going to confront. You wanted to confront. Mars square Saturn in relationships around you and it depends what houses they fall in fall in anyway yeah. so you know if you get Mars square Saturn and it's uh, the Saturn is in your seventh house then it's going to be within relationships and then wherever Mars is coming from um yeah it might be a conflict between work and relationships if it's square and the four, the twelfth sorry the tenth house let me get this straight. Uh, this is really interesting what you just said you're saying it doesn't describe the personality but it describes the events in a person's life yeah i think so i really don't like this thing that like, this is you set like in stone i've that, changed my mind about it it's, it's kind of my own like i don't know if anybody else thinks this but um because they the the Greeks called them the daemons anyway, which is like a testing thing. And and it's like you've got a demon on one side of you and then you've got the angel on the other. So I do think that, you know, that the, the negative aspects are like the demons that are testing you. And then the positive ones are the is the blessings, I you see. know. And I, there used to be the thing like, oh, yeah, squares are bad karma and um, the trines are things you did good in a last life. But again, it's like, what if your whole chart is full of squares? Like, she must have been oh I must have been a mass murderer and I've had people I've had clients come to me saying I've got such a terrible chart I must have been so bad in the last life I said no don't think like that. that's awful to think you were you were so yeah. awful 
that you got this chart because we chose it. So, you know, it's like, so if you chose a chart, then it's, there's free will anyway. Exactly. So, I mean, we create our karma in this lifetime. Yeah. So I think it's yeah. very important to be aware of what we're doing today and not think that everything is destined and predestined yeah. and terrible things are going to happen. We've got to really look at how we can transform our, our lives and and use the gifts, the goals that the astrology chart is telling us all about. And take life. responsibility for it as well. Yeah, exactly. Because then other people say, oh, I can't do that because I'm, you know, this There's is my fate. excuses people make up. I yeah. Think. It's they the victim use thing. Their chart for excuses, why? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's like no. So yeah. So whenever I do a reading, I, I just want to get the most positive thing. Is because it's like that. That's my. G I think that's my job on this earth is to be as positive as possible because there's so much negativity and right. hopelessness and no, no, no. <laughs> Exactly. So tell me a little bit more about your astrology and what you, how you feel like it's different from the astrology that's practiced today. I know you were talking about how some people are doing astrology and it's not the right, you know, not taking the right approach. Tell me what you think about that. Yeah, well, I think people, well, okay, so can I get into the the 2016 predictions for go ahead go <laughs> for it i know you're <laughs> you're dying oh, right there this was the when i thought oh my god i had no idea that people are so biased and then when when you step outside of this uh, all right let's say to be honest yeah and people know this my viewers know this i used to be quite left-wing because i was an art student and of course when you're an art student everyone's very left-wing and the new age is predominantly left-wing i don't think i'm anything now but the thing is if you're not left-wing you must be right mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're not allowed to be nothing but anyway so i found this out so when um yeah when we had the 2016 election i was thinking how are they predicting hillary to win when they don't have her time I they know. didn't have her time. And they, they were so have her time. Sure. We actually finally got her birth time. Did you know that? Oh, because no. yes, when you turn 70 years old in the US, your birth your birth information from the Bureau of Vital Statistics mm. is public knowledge. And there oh, was an astrologer that was after that for a long time. And I can't remember what time. I did a video on it what time oh, she really good. is born. Wow. But here's the interesting thing. It was nothing what everyone said it was. Oh, they yeah. said 2 a.m. and all yeah. these different times, all of them were wrong. And yeah. I was actually at the ESAR, I think in one of my videos, I talked about this, the ESAR prediction that there were a panel of 13 astrologers. And I was too afraid to say Trump because everyone yeah. was, you know, mortified. And no, because yeah, we said that was love love him anyway. So okay, so you know what I did? We didn't have our time. I used Chelsea Clinton's birth chart. It was so clear, and I said it clear in that talk. I said Hillary Clinton will not be president. Look so at her weird. daughter's chart. I and did that too. I looked at her chart too. I thought, oh, yeah, you can see the mother. Yeah. That is exactly brilliant. Brilliant. Yes, and none of those people thought to even look at it. And they're using all these focus times. So to make a long story short, mm -hmm. you and I both predicted Trump and yeah. we were too scared to say it because everyone attacked you yeah. back then. It was yeah. crazy. Here's my thoughts on Donald Trump. My thoughts are he is a catalyst for yeah. change. And yeah, he's a great whether, figurehead. Whether you like him or yeah. not, if you hate him or you love him, he created the change that is yeah. waking everyone up to what's really been going on all this time. So yeah. it has nothing to do with really him, but he was a catalyst for this, this change that I think is necessary to wake everyone up as to what's been mm -hmm. going on in our world for so long. What do you think about that? Well, yeah, I mean, when I looked at his chart, I thought, wow, what a chart. I mean, he had regulars, he had, it was just such a powerful chart. And obviously his whole life he's been famous. Right. So I just thought, well, I just thought it's really, it's it's entertaining. 
you know, and it, it oh, just it's showed the whole plat big entertainment that politics yeah. is and everything is. It yes. is. Politics has become entertainment. Yeah. And I have to say, Donald Trump's chart is a perfect chart to practice and prove theories mm. in astrology, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the way he became such uh, an icon, like of this regulus icon of the golden-headed savior of the world and, and like the people that liked him you know people yeah. like you know that the people that loved him put him on such a pedestal he was this golden headed like so extreme larger than life but he's so regulus he was he embodied a regulus so much mars on regulus that? rising he has you're gonna love this about vedic astrology you're probably gonna want to study it after this but, <laughs> but <laughs> this regulus is the star that's in the nakshatra called maga and maga everyone said oh my god well oh my <laughs> <laughs> and isn't that I couldn't make it up? It's Ma it's Maga. Yes, that oh. is the nakshatra where Regulus sits. And of course, we're talking mm. about Regulus because it is exactly his rising ascendant degree. Yeah. That fixed star that mm. represents in, in Vedic astrology, Maga's symbol is a throne. It represents oh. kingship. <laughs> and here we have his ascendant exactly that degree that yeah. that regular sits which is in the nakshatra maga i think that's so fascinating but. and the whole thing of like he's gold towers and he's just just gold 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 and so over the top and over the yeah, top and his yeah, golden hair yeah. and everything so yeah. i mean he was entertaining yeah that that's the thing with him and i mean I, I haven't looked at, I haven't looked, because I said I was going to, after the next, you know, the 2021, um, and I thought he was going to get in again. I really did. And um, and I predicted that too. <laughs> but obviously I was wrong. You know, I did too. And I'll tell you why, because Rahu was transiting in his 10th house and Rahu usually is a big rise. And, mm. you know, but there was other things going on. And really looking at Biden's chart, was very interesting because he was in the Dasha of Jupiter, Biden. I can't remember exactly what it was, but mm. it was pretty well there that Biden would be president. But I couldn't get over Rahu. Rahu is the North Node of the Moon, by the way. Yeah, yeah. And the North Node usually gives. And generally, nine times out of ten, when somebody's running for a political uh, election and Rahu's in the 10th house, it usually gives a rise. So most, uh, a lot of astrologers predicted that based on the Rahu. Yeah. Yeah, no, actually, now, now I'm thinking back to it. I remember what I said originally for Trump was, I don't know if he'll get in this time, but he, he, but I looked at his, um, peak periods because this is a zodiacal releasing is a method in traditional astrology, which I don't use anymore because it, I just wasn't sure whether it really worked. But when I used that, um, his peak period was in 2020. So I said, well, if he doesn't get in this time, he definitely will in 2020 because that was his peak period. And then it was the, the opposite. And then I thought, mm, does this method really work? So then I decided not to use well, it anymore. Let me ask you this. What do you think about 2024? I haven't even looked at his transits yet, but I think I think they want him back because you see, I they who are they? The, the, yeah, yeah. Who the are they? He he just he is just a he's a he's a he is a playing a role, and his chart is the role of this kind of savior person. Um, but I think they want him. I think they want him back because maybe I don't know what they're planning, but maybe they can they'll blame him for whatever In they're gonna sort of. I don't know. I don't well, know. I have I, to they, say th his transits are fabulous for 2024, but there's some other things <clears throat> that, that speak against him astrologically. So I'm not 100% sure. I always say, I don't yeah, want to make a decision yeah. till I know who they're running against, because then I can compare both. Yeah, of them. yeah. But let oh, me yeah. just say this. His 10th house, this is sidereally, but doesn't matter, mm -hmm. tropically or sidereal, uh, Jupiter will be in his 10th house. Uh, mm -hmm. whether you're using tropical or yeah. Surreal, yeah. Right? yeah and it's going and jupiter is going to cross over his sun 
and his Rahu in 2024 around the time of the elections. And oh. he has Sun Rahu, which remembers the North Node of the Moon, and Uranus in the 10th house and transiting Jupiter in 2024 will be there. So that speaks, you know, that something big is happening for him, very mm. auspicious in one way. So, yeah. Maybe. I see, I just don't know. I don't know about him because I, I, I thought I sort of felt for a while I fell into the sort of hmm, maybe he is a bit he is like a good. Well, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know about him, but maybe he he is this kind of, I don't know, a symbol of something good or, or that's going to a big change that is positive to at least have honesty, you know, uh, because he's he's not, you know what I mean? He doesn't. He's not a kind of ne what I call a sort of Neptunian, uh, you know, he says what he thinks. Oh, and I like yeah. people that wear their heart on their sleeve just say what they think. There's no kind of like um, manipulative sort of... Let me put it this way. He's not a politician. <laughs> no, no, that's true. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. He's not. Um, so, so we thought he was kind of outside the matrix mm -hmm. sort of thing. But I can't figure out whether now he's in it or... That's the thing I don't really know. What I always say, <clears throat> just yeah. to, you know, and this is a very politician thing because I have a lot of Libra in my chart, but, <laughs> but <clears throat> all politicians are corrupt. They're all out yeah, to get yeah. what they want and yeah. you know, they're yeah. going to step on whoever they want to get there. So I think they're all kind of a little corrupt or at fault in some way. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's going to be somebody though and I don't know if you see this in your astrology, but I think there's going to be somebody that's going to take the world by storm. It's going to come out of left field for the politics of America and everything's about to change between now and next uh, till the end of the year. You'll, so okay. what do you think about that? Do you have any predictions? I'm, cause I, some people I listen to, they were sort of saying that these are people that aren't even astrologers. And I, I think everybody's got that feeling that that the, the good has already won. It's just that the the people who are still in power just they're in the sort of um, you know like when a creature dies, it's in its kind of last throes, and it's just throwing out everything out there, going ah, you know, and just going crazy with with all the progressive nutty stuff um, because it knows it's already lost. Because no, they're trying they're throwing all these things like the fifteen minute minute cities and. I don't know if you've got that in in America, but in England, they're trying to make everyone live in places that are only 15 minutes. Well, you can only travel 15 minutes because of the green thing. Oh. Um, and they do, and the, and all the I, digital IDs and all these like really authoritarian control things. Oh, and they keep trying to push them through, but they're not they're not sticking, and people just won't have it. So, um, I just think they're just. I, I don't know. I hope so. I want to think positively that think there is a change that's happening because people yeah i think people have woke that people have woken up it's it's gone so extreme if you can have someone i can't believe you know president biden for the united states it's the most powerful country in the world and your president is so <laughs> you know it's like what <laughs> he doesn't know where he is half the time uh, and I, you know, this has been unbelievable. What is this? I mean, truly, um, we've got to. I mean, people need to need to realize that we need people that can really rule. And yeah, stuff. but I think you know, probably there's people behind everyone. Um, you know, people have to know this, pulling the strings. Yeah. They just have. Yeah, to. it has to. Otherwise, yeah. they're in denial. You know. No, we've got the same thing in England. We've had like about three prime ministers in the space of about six months. Yeah. Just they, they, yeah, nothing's sticking. Um, but I, hopefully, it's power to the people, and maybe things will get like in like little communities will start. Yeah, it'll you know, it's happening all over the world because I mean I don't keep up with French politics, but I know everybody's in an uproar over Macron, and I don't yeah, know yeah. what it's all about. But all I know is they're in an uproar. Yeah, so yeah. Everywhere around the world, we're all in an uproar over. We don't want to be controlled. We don't want to be told what to do. Yeah. We want to have great societies where we all work together and we're prosperous and we like each other and we've got 
prosperous, everything working in our countries. Why is it we can't have leadership that promotes that instead of, it seems like they're almost trying to make us go against each other so that we- yeah, divide and conquer. Yeah. There's been so much of that, the polarities. I've never known it yet. I mean, I'm old enough to remember, you know, there was, there was, <laughs> There was always like, you know, because left and right, but they were never so, so like, if you're never. not what I never. think you're, you're. And you know what? Before we just didn't talk about politics, nor no. did we care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> at, you know, at that point, mm -hmm. you know, when mm -hmm. I was younger, we didn't care so much. But now it's like, it's, well, it is like you said before, it's entertainment for everyone now. It's mm -hmm. very entertaining, but mm -hmm. not at the cost of losing our liberties or mm -hmm. losing our freedom, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's everywhere. England. Yeah. France, you name it, China. <laughs> I mean, yeah, uh, so. I wonder. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, everyone's been going on about because because you're Vedic, so you it wouldn't even affect you. The whole, um, you know, Pluto's going into Aquarius. Um, right. But you know what we do have uh, here, and it doesn't even matter. We have the Pluto return for the United States. Oh yeah, the chart. Yeah, yeah. So, so that I does. Mean, that's pretty yeah. much a transformational. Yeah huge transformational event happening in America in the next year, yeah. year or two. It's huge. So Yeah, Pluto, I noticed, um, ah, because actually there's a connection between the um, US chart and the British chart, because I think the suns are square each other and they and they were having the same Pluto transit. I can't, or was it Saturn? I can't remember, but I just remember thinking, because there's a lot of synastry between the US chart and the British chart, there are similar things happening. Because, you know, we had Brexit going on, you had Trump. So, yeah, yeah. and <laughs> when I was predicting, yeah, I, when I was looking at the chart for Brexit, because that was really important to me, but, you know, a lot of people, eh, again, that was another divisive thing that was happening in England. It was the same thing. If you vote Brexit, you're a complete Nazi or whatever, yeah. you know, like... <laughs> Oh, uh, you know, it's the same thing as Trump. You couldn't say it. You couldn't, you had to sort of vote, you know, say it privately. But I wanted to look at it. So I sort of said, well, you know, I'm looking at this Pluto transit to the UK chart and there's something big, big change is coming here for yeah. Brexit. Um, and they tried everything to make it not happen and it still went through. And I, and I sort of predicted tentatively, maybe, you know, it's not going to stay the same. Yeah, uh, and then it did, and then it happened. Um, wow. And uh, yeah, so so I just think, yeah, Pluto. I think what's happening, whether you're Vedic or um, uh, tropical, is that it's it, Pluto will go on to a fixed star, star called Altair, which is the uh, in the eagle, and oh, yeah. the eagle is. When you think of empires, they use the eagle as a symbol for empire all the time. You know, it, for, for America, it's their symbol. Uh, God, for Germany in the war, yeah. you know, it was it was their symbol. Oh, yeah. And Roman Empire as oh. well. So you've got three big, you know. So the, I think there's a connection with Altair and empire. That's so maybe it's thing. like the empire is breaking down. But, what, you know, which empire? So is it Pluto is going to be on altar? Altar, yeah. yeah. It, altar is um, at two. Uh, it's it's about one degree, one to two degrees of well, Aquarius. That's and huge. so when Pluto goes into Aquarius, it will sort of hit there soon next year. I've got my sun on that star, so <laughs> I've got Pluto coming wow. to me too. Ta -da! Wow. So you're going through yes. a major transformational change for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's a very powerful star. Yes. Yeah. So, but it is also it's a funny that the mythology with Altair is weird as well because it's uh, also connected with it's a god who came. It's the eagle that Zeus sent down to heaven to find his um, uh, water bearer boys. Wow. So it's a bit of like so he would pick nice looking young boys to serve the wine so it's like sexy wine waiter type thing yeah. so he would send his that eagle down to that so there is a bit of an, a, a sort of yucky side to Altair as well and I thought is it connected with like paedophilia and you know like picking young 
you know, preying on innocent, young, beautiful boys or girls. You know what I mean? So there is that side to it too. And I'm hoping it will expose, because, you know, there's all that issues as well. Right. Um, that we know that, you know, the dark side of the government yeah. and all the, all yeah. the underworld of the, you know, I don't want to get, in, I don't want to <laughs> get into too dirt murky waters, but there is that too, yeah, which okay. I think will be exposed. I, and, I love that. Well, tell me a little bit more about any of the stars that are, you know, going to be coming up and talking about what's going to be happening in the world. Or tell us some more about some of the fixed stars. I'm so fascinated with the well, fixed stars. Well, yeah, the main, well, the main one is Altair, to be honest, um, because of Pluto. Um, I'm not quite, I haven't actually looked, um, yeah, I haven't really looked at uh, the other ones lately um uh, but all terror is is a big one um yeah and and well the only one that i'm thinking of now for the lunar eclipse that's coming up is zubin el Janubi, which is the star in um in the southern scale of libra which is associated with loss so we're gonna there's gonna be some sort of big loss i'm right. <laughs> not quite sure it's monetary as well because it's the scales okay so that one coming up, I mean, we've obviously got in England, there's the whole cost of living crisis and, uh, you know, well, we our interest rate is going to go up. Are people going to lose their houses? Yeah, you know, the, the banks are failing in America. Hmm. The banks. Oh, yes. There was that. Yes. What was that big, that, that, that um, Silicon Valley bank that It was that one fell? of the ones in um, California. Yeah. San Francisco. I forgot the name of it, but yeah. I think it was Silicon, it was called Silicon Valley or something. Yeah, you're right. Something like that. Um, and then that sort of impacted, they, in England, everyone was going, oh, is it going to affect us? And it's bad enough as it is. And so it's like, well, why would it affect, you know, as, exactly. whenever something happens in America, it's like, oh, everyone in England goes, oh, it's, it's kind of weird. I mean, it's kind of like, Wherever, you know, it, it, America does start a lot of things, I'll say that. And yeah. I mean, it reverberates throughout the world, such but as I the think stock market, it, for one, you know. But then I do think it may be because, you know, obviously America was connected by, because you know, the, the whole, like, America was came from England, you know, the, yeah. the Civil War and all that, and that it used to be ruled by monarchy. And then there's such a sinistry between the charts, which is... So interesting. So there's definitely a connection spiritually. Yeah, you know. you're going to have to give me the chart you use for England because I don't have a good one. Uh, the one I have is so old, it's like it can't be correct. The year. Yeah. Okay. So you'll have I think to um, the one I use I, is pretty old. It's like, it I think it's 18 something. I can't remember. Oh, no, this one was like z zero, zero. I mean, it was like before. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> William the like, Conqueror. No was right. Who was taking? Who was taking? You know, charge of uh, the time of events back then. Yeah. No, yeah. I can't remember which. I think it was when it became the um, when it was the the three of them, the United Kingdom. I think it was the, you, you, top of the United Kingdom. That once you once you look. Yeah, I have to find it. Um, yeah, yeah, I haven't got it right handy, now. but yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So any other mm. predictions that you foresee coming? I know people love to know what's coming. Oh, predictions. <laughs> and you know, you're in England, I'm in the US, and you see things from a different view. Mm. So fascinating. Um, I, I don't know. Let me think. Well, uh, I do think that, yeah, there's more going to... I think it's the Pluto Alto thing. I think it's there is like the shocking exposing of things that are in the deep murky underworld because that's what pluto is it's exactly. it's bringing it's bringing what's festering under the surface or you know to the, to the top and it's going to be stinky <laughs> it's a stinky swamp basically yeah. that's yeah. going to come up and it, i mean it's still you know this thing with tucker and you know it's you it's, wonder how could it be any more than it's already been exposed but you're saying it's we've got a lot more coming oh i think there's a lot more there's uh, a lot more to come <laughs> i do too yeah yeah definitely um i think this the the pluto thing it, well because well you got the the pluto return it hasn't finished yet has it or has it yeah, with, it with america yeah it's just starting oh okay yeah and if you use procession which i kind of do for my transits as well it's 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 even further back so yeah, yeah. Well, so 
that's what the Vedic uses the procession, you know, yeah. everything is back. Uh, 20 yeah, yeah. degrees in the zodiac. That's the processional cycle. Yeah. Yeah. How I do it with, with my astrology is um, because in on, on solar fire, you can actually set it to procession corrected. So the older you are, your Pluto transit will be a lot further behind. So people might say, oh, you've got your Pluto transit now. And I say, well, no, it's not quite. It won't, probably won't yeah. be for another six months. Someone of my age, it will be sort of six months, maybe maybe even a year, yeah, nearly a year behind yeah. what. I have you know, heard that a lot of the placements that people are using for Pluto are incorrect. Yeah, because the yeah. procession, because it's so slow. It's not, it's not so bad for the personal planets, and even Jupiter's okay and, and Saturn. But when you get to the to the outers, it, uh, and if you're older as well, it's okay if you're 18, it's going to be similar. But it, it adjusts for how old you are. So are you talking it, about like solar directions? No, no, no. It's it, You know when you just do your normal... Yeah. Um, transits um when you adjust for precession it, it it drags it back a bit the, the planet that's transiting doesn't hit it as early as it says in the ephemeris because you've got to adjust it for your own age so I it's see. it's a case by case so but solar fire does that to you for you and the the reason i did it that was because i read i was reading robert hand and he he used procession i thought oh yeah at the time it was like robert hand is is god so i'll do whatever he does yeah. but i just found it kind of worked and yeah. um and i i was using procession i think yes i was using procession for the brexit pluto transit to the U united kingdom chart because it's an old chart right um so it it pulled it back okay so it seemed to work and i think um I think for 9-11 as well, I was using procession, procession for that. And if, if you don't use procession, I don't think Saturn was exactly on the ascendant or wherever it was. It was somewhere in an angle for 9-11. Um, but with procession, it seemed to be more accurate. So I, I, I like to use it, but yeah. it is a bit, it's, uh, nobody else does. <laughs> Again, no, so. that makes total sense. I agree with that. Yes, yeah. we should be using that processional change there. Everything the is moving all the time. You can't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and and I believe in that. That's why you know I look at the the true placements of where the planets yeah. really are uh, astronomically. Because don't forget, I did Western astrology for twenty years, and all of a sudden I heard that we are using the placements of where planets were 2000 years ago, I was like, wait a minute, this is where they really are. So I took it upon myself to uh, really investigate the Vedic and, and I totally uh, dove in. It, it well, the reason I didn't go to, to Vedic was because I wanted to sort of be on the same page as everybody else. And, but also I know it's a bit of a lazy thing, but there is value in the tropical zodiac, but it is a different zodiac. They are two different things. The tropical is because of the seasonal connection. Right. So you can't really, I think, you know, like Aries in Vedic is different from Aries in Aries as a, if you're born in the month of Aries, it's almost like you're, you're not Aries, you're March, you know, your equinox, your because it does go with the seasons, but then only in, in the northern hemisphere. Like yes, it, yes. it doesn't really make sense if you're in Australia because it's the yes, whole flip, so you flip many it. arguments. I hear mm. you. And, you know, because I started with Western astrology, it was really hard for me to understand how my personality could be Libra instead yeah. of Scorpio. Yeah. You know? yeah. But there are reasons why, because. This uh, Vedic astrology goes so much deeper. It's not the surface personality stuff. Yeah. It's more about events and strengths of planets. And of course, the houses. You know, somebody goes, yeah. I can't be Libra. I mean, I'm talking, uh, one person told me, I couldn't be at Libra. You know, they have their son in Scorpio. And I said, Well, how many planets do you have in the eighth house? Four. That's why you have the Scorpio personality tend to uh, yeah 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 so there's always a reason and then again people are always just talking about the sun sign you know as well as i do they're yeah. gonna have 
Venus or Mercury, but it's always close to the sun, in that sign before, same of or after. So probably if they think uh, I can't be I can't be Libra, I'm Scorpio. Well, they probably have Mercury in Scorpio, and that yeah. might be how you think. So there's all these reasons why, but I just feel like. For events and prediction, I felt like Vedic gave me what I was looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's, it's so interesting because, you know, I I was a Western astrologer and yeah. all of it clicked and all of it worked. I just wanted to go deeper and really understand why are we here, the deeper, deeper karmic reasons, and to really, really understand how prediction works. And, you know, when you look at Western and, Va and Vedic, you're going to have the same aspects. because Yes, that's, that's the thing. There's so many... That, that's the thing that it's when Jupiter hits, yeah. the, you know, when Jupiter hits the sun, it's going to hit the sun, no matter if you're doing yeah. Western or Vedic, because the transits go back 24. Well, that's degrees. why. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's why when I do readings, I don't like to focus. I don't ever, I don't ever really say, well, your moon's in Libra and <laughs> I don't just fly. You know, it's always the, the, the things that are more, most important to me are the aspects between them, yes. where the house positions Ooh. And the fixed stars. So I kind of shy away from being too much personality sun signs. Me too. Because Me too. because I they think. are because they if they can be different in Vedic, it's like then you know you just feel like you're it's imposter syndrome sometimes. I think you know don't place so much emphasis on personalities of you know the sun Do you signs. Really need somebody to tell you about your personality. Don't you kind of know? I want to know what's going to be. Yeah, exactly. Life. <laughs> yeah and and like i said earlier i um i don't know if i we were talking about this before we aired but um i prefer to think of a chart as we have free will first of all and the chart should describe um events and um experiences you chose for your spiritual development so it's really not a personality thing um i mean even the ascendant which describes your physical body um that i think it it's more like this is the vehicle you chose um and you you pick the vehicle that's suitable for the terrain so you're not going to pick a shy horse if you want to go you know horse race you, know, you want to do you know fast right um racing or formula one type things right. you know so whatever yeah you choose the right vehicle for for your kind of mission on earth i guess right. so so i see, sort of see it as Describing the spacesuit, really. And I don't know. Another thing, you know, the Vedic, the, the deterrent to Vedic is they feel like everything's so faded and karma and you can't escape your karma. There's oh, yeah, there's that. Too. Yeah. And, I, and I'm like you. I, I agree. I feel like we have free will. We're creating our karma right now. This yeah. is, you know, we, we need to take responsibility, know what's wrong in our charts and change it. That's what the chart is telling you. So, I don't I don't go to that fatalistic approach either. I believe in mm. free will and having the opportunity to change our lives. And that's the beauty of astrology. That's the information it gives you. Yeah, because you can, I mean, for example, I have a friend of mine. She's um she's she's going out with one of twins. And you know, so they get, they've got the same chart, but they are totally different. Totally different. So yeah, I mean the guy she's with, obviously she loves him, but the the his twin, oh my god, like I won't can't get into personal things, but you know they're very different. So I mean it's almost like you know what you could one could be the it's like the flip side, it's like the evil twin of the other one. Right. So right. how does that happen with the same chart? Well, actually in Vedic, there's a reason. <laughs> oh, okay. We have the divisional charts that go into gr much greater detail and even a divisional chart of a half a minute would give you a different chart Ooh. so the divisional charts from one twin to the other can be very different and yeah and and when talking about twins you know that didn't make sense to me with western astrology because like mm -hmm. you say they're the same exact chart mm -hmm. how can astrology explain that well, in Vedic, it, it explained it. So that pushed me over the edge, too, considering talking about twins, that all their divisional charts, not all of them, but many of them yeah. that reflect their life are different. Therefore, the twins are different. Mm -hmm. I think how I would deal with it is that, well, first of all, if you use fixed stars, there's a fixed star for every degree. So 
you know, so a, a minute, a couple of minutes difference, they will have different fixed styles rising. Right. But I still, I still think, I still think that they're these, so you have twins, they, they're born with the same curriculum, if you like, or the same things to study, but one of them might choose to study you know, Mars Square, Saturn, and the other one might choose to be more into the Venus trine. You're right. Uh, so that's Jupiter. the free will coming forth. So there's yeah. the free will. Yeah. Because, I mean, how many people are born at the same day, yeah. in the same hospital, and the same, you know, as you, and probably have totally different lives. Exactly. So the free will is so important, and people underestimate that so much. And right. it's I feel so sad for people that sort of like going, Oh, tell me what I tell me what my career is. I don't know. I have. I need to know what my you know destiny is. And I thought, well, I can't really tell you your destiny. But when I read your chart, I'll give you lots of different options because exactly. there's so many different options Here's and permutations of the very same chart. You know, and um, one could be. I mean, there, there seems to be yeah. There's like a, a spectrum of of possibilities in one kind of aspect, even. Exactly. You know. So I said, well, you could do this. And if you're like, if you're into gardening, then you could be a herbalist because Sarah's is whatever. And, you know, there are so many different ways, um, but only they know. And exactly. so many people want you to tell them, tell me my future, tell me that, you know, but I, you can't. And it would be really irresponsible to sort of say, well, it's, it's, I don't want that responsibility for a start. Yeah. Be telling people, you know, because it's it's too much um and they need to yeah take responsibility for their chart but i can show them the way that's, exactly. that's the thing it's just directions and options but you it's at the end of the day people have to learn to use their free will yes okay well marina this has been a fascinating conversation with you i have enjoyed this so much and yes. We could talk forever, you and I, but I think we need to yeah. wrap okay. it up now because <laughs> the, the people have the attention span of four minutes today and we could go on for four hours. Yeah. But I hope everyone has really gotten something out of this or talk about twins or talk about the fixed stars, about politics, where the world's going. We have so much to share astrologically. And Marina, coming from England, knows a whole different terrain than I do. So it's wonderful to share these viewpoints and yeah. the possibilities, especially even sharing the viewpoints with Western and Vedic. It's so interesting. Yeah. We all have something to learn from each other. Isn't that right? Yep, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. All right. Well, I think we'll close from here. But Marina, my pleasure. I had so much fun talking to you. And I thank hope you. everyone has enjoyed it as much as I have. So thank you, everyone. Thank you.